Shasta County Board of Supervisors meeting. The board is moving forward with a gun range in Shasta County. More on the moments leading to the decision. A celebration of life for a teacher at Enterprise High School. When it's taking place. And more showers and even snow is in the forecast where the snow will have the greatest impact. The North States News starts right now. Live, local, breaking, news you can trust. This is the North States News at 11. Good evening and welcome to the North States News at 11. I'm Sofia Burnsma filling in for Ariana Martinez. We have some breaking news out of Shasta County Board of Supervisors meeting. They are approving a plan to build a shooting range in Shasta County. The board decided on a three to one vote, also agreeing to add prohibition of alcohol on the range. County Supervisor Patrick Jones put forward the proposal as of now it's planned to be located on Leopard Drive north of Dirsch Road in rural Shasta County. Shasta County. The meeting started around 530 and it just wrapped up a little after 1030. Public comments lasted about an hour before this only item on the agenda was discussed and another lengthy hour went on after that presentation. Because it will bring a few tourists to our uh, community that will pay rent rooms and buy meals. So uh, I'll take, I hope you'll take all this into consideration. So you should vote yes on this zoning amendment. It will provide quality, safe location relative to the topography. It will be an effective and appropriate use of the land. It will preserve the natural environment and the safety of the surrounding areas. It does have its shortfalls. It's not managed, it's not regulated, and there's no safety measures in place. That has been a problem. People are going to practice sighting in their guns someplace. We need a safe place where they can go. If they don't go someplace specifically set up for safety, they will create their own places to shoot. You can read more about the decision at krcrtv.com. For the latest on breaking news, download the KRCR News Channel 7 mobile app. All you have to do is search KRCR in your device's app store. And don't forget to turn on push notifications to get alerts about wildfires, traffic alerts, and all the latest local news. So we're approaching fall, or are we in fall now? Um, our Brian Schofield is here. <laughs> You're approaching me. <laughs> yes, we're approaching you with the answers, Brian. Let us know. I've got a few. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't felt like fall. That's what's throwing you off a little bit, I'll tell you that. Uh, but we're going to feel a little more fall-like, actually a lot more fall-like, especially the rest of this week. Tell you that. Take a look at these, uh, really what's doing on the satellite radar composite. I was going to show you some numbers, but let's show this first. Uh, definitely that big dip and all that colder air in behind this front. A cold front will be burning its way through, and it's going to make a difference in how it feels. It's going to wipe out all those 70s and 80s we saw, bring them down to the 60s. But we're talking about getting some old oh, mountain snow and valley rain. Can you believe that? It was, you know, I said the word snow. I had every producer in here going, okay, you really want to talk about snow? I'm like, yeah, upper elevations, we're talking generally 4,000 feet and above. Some areas, let's say through Del Norte, could see it down to 35, and other areas, maybe through Modoc, might see it up to 45 before we start to see snow, or even 5,000 feet. But we're really talking about getting our first little taste of it in areas, and you can see what's coming into Crescent City right now. And most of that starts to make its way into the valley in the early morning hours, and then late morning as well. You folks in Chico start to see that a little bit more too. And really, those are our weather headlines to speak of. We're talking about overnight showers, we're talking about some breezy conditions. Oh, it's going to bring some wind with it. But that seasonal snow, we'll do a little uh, snowfall map and see which areas have the best chance at it coming up in your first alert forecast, and that's just ahead. In Tehama County, a man has been convicted on several charges of burglary, criminal threats, and assault on a peace officer. Tehama County District Attorney Matt Rogers says in May, Eric Cotton Jr. and Tony Edison went to a Red Bluff home in a stolen car, rammed a gate, and set the car on fire before robbing a person at gunpoint. Deputies caught up with them at Rolling Hills Casino in Corning, where Cotton rammed the patrol car and led them on a high-speed chase. Cotton was convicted today on 11 different charges. He is a Tehama County. He's in that jail while he waits for sentencing November 13th. Edison will be in court on Monday. New tonight on the North Coast, a woman was arrested on a felony warrant in Hoopa last week. 
The Hoopa Tribal Police Department says the officers contacted Rosanna Billings on Big Hill Road. She was found to have an active felony warrant for intent to distribute methamphetamine. Billings was arrested and taken to Humboldt County Jail. We have an update Sunday shooting on Klamath that left one man dead. The Yurok Tribal Police say Randall Flusher was the one killed in the shooting. They've arrested 22-year-old Dylan Rhodes for the crime. According to police, this happened right off of Highway 101 in Klamath. Firefighters arrived and tried to save Flusher's life, but he died at the scene. Rhodes has been booked into jail by the Del Norte County Sheriff's Office and charged with murder. Yurok Police note they are still investigating the incident. A procession and funeral took place in Crescent City today to honor the late Sheriff Deputy Deanna Ismail, who was believed to have been killed by her boyfriend Daniel Walker. Esmail's children were present at her funeral along with upward of 50 law enforcement officers from the Del Norte County Sheriff's Office. Her son, actor Marty York, recalled the many times his mother helped him in both his professional and personal life. She told me to never give up and she had the attitude of you can do anything you put your mind to and that's what she did and that's what she did through life. That's what she did in the Sheriff Department. That's what she did in the, in the movie industry. The suspect, Daniel Walter, is currently in custody at the Humboldt County Sheriff's Office. The Del Norte County Sheriff's Office is investigating the homicide, but has yet to release any further details. We'll have a more depth in story, in story report about the funeral and procession in tomorrow's newscast. A beloved teacher at Enterprise High School has passed away last week. The school announced it today, and it will be holding a celebration of life at the school gym. It will be November 11th at 4 p.m. Guests are asked to dress extreme black and gold. And instead of flowers, guests are encouraged to bring plants. The Reading School posted on Facebook saying Justin Jordan has been a positive force on the campus every day, admired by students, staff, and the community. The high school's website indicates he taught social sciences. He'd been working at the school the last 22 years since 2001. This Saturday is National Prescription Drug Take Back Day. Chico State is holding an event on campus to give the community a chance to turn in unwanted medication. The North State's News Hannah Gutierrez is in Chico to tell us about it. So anybody who has any expired or unwanted prescription medications within their household, they can just bring it to here to the campus. We're going to be at the corner of Second Normal at the turnout. And uh, we'll have a couple stations there set up where they could just come by and discard that old unwanted medication. According to research done by AmeriCorps Vista in Butte County, they believe access to care and methods of prescribing medication are different than the rest of the state, causing a rise in the need for medical intervention. In Butte County, we're also seeing a prescription opioid related hospitalization rate of around 33 per 100,000. And so with those rates, we're seeing people who are coming in for overdose, who are coming in for sicknesses. They say participating in drug take back events can decrease the likeliness of drug addictions and overdoses in the county and also keep the community safe and educated on the dangers of prescription drugs. We don't want any accidental overdoses for from anybody. And so it kind of gives people uh, an opportunity to get rid of that medication in an eco-friendly way because we also don't want it to end up in landfills, so this way it's discarded in, a, in the proper manner. Drug take back is a really important step to public health and preventing overdoses because taking medication out of the house that's not being used that could be a potential hazard for someone in the house that isn't fully informed on the dangers of taking that medication. Uh, right when we saw the uh, bear, it, all we saw was snout and uh, eyes. It was looking right at us. A close call in Car North Carolina, mama bear and cubs broke into a minivan. How deputies stepped in to help when they got stuck, the full story is next. And a live look in Reading from a house where we lost sky camera. I'm Sophia Brinsma and this is the North States News. Butte County is recognizing District Attorney Mike Ramsey today as he celebrates his 45th year with the county. 
He received a recognition in this morning's Board of Supervisors meeting. Board members applauded him for his institutional knowledge and dedication. He actually started with the county as a student intern before taking on various deputy district attorney roles. Since then, he's been elected 10 times to the role. We asked him what his proudest achievement throughout the decades has been. Uh, the priority in our office is to prosecute child abuse, either sexual or physical. And that came about from one of my first assignments in the office doing that, and we've continued, continued that. And also just kind of the, our office uh, statement, kind of motto is you know, to do justice as no one is above the law nor beneath its protection. Fun fact, Mike Ramsey is actually the longest serving DA in the state of California and he tells us the years have gone by pretty quickly. A family in Avery County found a 250 pound bear inside their minivan. Deputies soon learned there were also two cubs inside. Dave Faherty reports. This is body cam video of Deputy Scott Bray and Tom Gwynn arriving at the home near Banner Elk. They believe the mama bear managed to get the door of the minivan open, and then she and her cubs climbed inside and the door closed behind them. The windows were so fogged up, it was difficult to see much of anything. Uh, right when we saw the uh, bear, it, all we saw was snout and uh, eyes. It was looking right at us. Because of the damage inside, the rear sliding doors no longer worked. The deputies decided to tie rope to the front door handle and pull from a safe distance. Watch as the mama bear climbs out, but she didn't leave instead turning around and getting up on her hind legs. Didn't really know what to think at the moment, but it's kind of a scary situation, but ended very well. It was then the men learned there were cubs in the rear of the van. The sheriff described them as yearlings, most likely born last year. The two deputies worked together to coax them out. Both cubs ran toward the backyard where they were reunited with their mother and another cub that was watching from a tree. We, we learned a valuable lesson. Um, just because you're out in the mountains and you don't think uh, you need to lock your doors, you need to go ahead and lock your doors to your vehicles. This just goes to show you, you, just, you never know what you're going to run into as a deputy sheriff. The minivan, which had thousands of dollars of damage, was a rental house, and those visitors did get insurance. You know, tomorrow afternoon highs might not even make it to these numbers. These are current temperatures right now. We might not even see those kind of numbers for tomorrow. Yes, the valley rain, a little mountain snow. Take a closer look in your first alert forecast. Registered nurses and other health care providers were on the picket line this morning on East Street outside Shasta Regional Medical Center. The hospital remained open throughout the protest. They say the informational picketing was early in the morning to bring attention to the SRMC's parent company, Prime Healthcare, who is requiring registered nurses to care for 10 patients, each double the maximum nurse to patient ratio in California. We um, have been uh, increasingly um, having to take more patients than we normally, the, the state allows us to have. And so we're wanting to make sure that the public is aware because we've been, we've been speaking inside and making the management asking them to increase the staffing levels to the state law and we haven't been able to get, we haven't been able to move them and so now we're out here making the public aware. I mean, you're telling me they're, they're breaking the law. They are breaking the law. Prime Healthcare issued this response to the informational picketing saying in part, Quote, Shasta Regional Medical Center follows safe staffing laws and we continuously support our caregivers, emphasizing safety in a healthy work environment as evidenced by the hospital receiving the 2023 Health Grade Patient Safety Excellence Award. We offer growth opportunities and programs such as continuing education, tuition reimbursement, career development and enhancement, and a robust employee assistance program to support health and wellness, end quote. And here's a live look at the Sundial Bridge tonight. I see a little bit of green in there, making me feel a little bit lucky. A <laughs> bit of Shrekness. Good stuff right there. Our first alert meteorologist, Brian Schofield, joins us in the Weather Center tracking all that good stuff. Hey, Brian. It, isn't this interesting? It made you feel lucky, but me envious. Green with envy. 
Oh, I just wow. want you to, yeah, I want to be there. <laughs> Jealous That's of green. Her. See that? <laughs> Two different worlds. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Uh, 76 Red Bluff, 79 today. Look at these numbers. Take a picture. They're not going to happen anytime this week ever again this week. It, next five days, we're going to be lucky to get out of the 60s, and we probably won't until maybe that very last fifth day or so, or sixth. Uh, 66 Chesterday, 73 through Chico. Just beautiful stuff. Okay, best areas for rain, I think usual suspects. I think we can say that pretty safely. Talking upper elevations, we're talking through Trinity County uh, in the mountains of Del Norte. Let's say out toward the east a little bit more. I say the mountains of Del Norte, just kind of be in general nature. Modoc as well, obviously down the spine of the Sierra as well. So mostly we're talking above 4,000 feet. You know your area, if it's not, you know, there's not a really great shot at you getting some of that. Not a, but not a terrible shot, getting a dusting, you know. But generally, it's no estimates above. And even some compute models are saying more so to 5,000 feet, but we're splitting the difference between 35, closer to Del Norte, and uh, certainly are closer to home here, uh, maybe getting up to 4,000 feet when we finally see that snow level right there. But either way, uh, cooler air coming into the picture. Definitely not major snow events, so we're not just trying to oversell it at all. Definitely talking about just the next round of rain through the area and the major cool down. So, you pick which is the bigger story. I think that cool down might even be a bigger story. This rain will run on through and it won't be as impressive as what we saw through Sunday, but still we'll take all we can get. Here comes some more. There it is, 5.30 in the morning. We're finally starting to see it hit the coast even better with some of the heavier stuff. And then you can see it just kind of falls apart as it gets inland quite a bit, but that doesn't mean there's no rain. It just means maybe a tenth of an inch, not a third of an inch at times, but you can see it's through Chico and Paradise and Certainly upper elevation, seeing that transition with that pink shaded color right there. That's a, into that wintry mix. And then by tomorrow night, it really is mostly out toward the east later in the night and certainly way early the Thursday. It's long gone. So there's just clouds left over from that and maybe some wind through Thursday. And then Friday, we keep some of that cloud cover in. But in general, we start off with a pretty decent, relatively dry weekend after Friday. So, hmm, here you go. Got some fog, got some 50s. Notice these temperatures have changed as well. We were talking 60s for so long, for months, and now we really get that cool pattern going, so we keep the temperatures on the low side. Notice we will actually get some sunshine as well through the area. Let me throw in an inland forecast here, because I put in the icon for some inland valley fog, inland snow as well, getting, once again, upper elevations mostly. But as you get closer into, uh, let's say, the north coast, we're talking maybe 3,500 feet will be the snow level there. For tonight, we're still thinking some upper 20s and 30s. Cloud cover may have something to do with the numbers uh, staying up tonight, but we're still going to call for some of those chillier numbers that'll be around freezing. Air mass is cold enough now, but it'll be even colder yet once we get into tomorrow night. That's when we really start to see those 50s for overnight lows that we've been experiencing drop down right there to the upper 30s to right around 40. We might keep a couple of days of that. We're not in jeopardy of anything more than maybe a little frost, but nevertheless, those temperatures are showing you we're getting into the season right there. The 70s don't show up till early next week, so next five days through Redding and Chico look like this. 40s for the most part for Chico, keeping some breezes in through Thursday, maybe some of that cloud cover still in through Friday, and looks pretty decent for the weekend, but on the mild side, of course, once again, not seeing near 70 till next week. Back to you. Thanks, Brian. There's a new gym in Shasta County. The man behind it is a former college and arena football player, Lem Adams. The North State's News, Sam Comente visited this place to get his work at on. Try it. Way to work. Oh, I'm not tired. I'm not tired. I'm you don't get tired. Hey, when you game here, you don't get tired. No. All right, I'm just, I'm don't get tired. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Clearly, I did get tired. A lifelong athlete in NorCal native, Lem Adams is a developmental guru molded by his playing days and some influential mentors, including former 49ers head coach Steve Mariucci. It's often said that sports provide lessons, and Adams has always taken notes. It's taught me more about myself. Um, the character in which the way I do things, and then also just the ability to be a leader. I mean, it taught me the, my leadership skills. Um, it taught me everything, pretty much. In Sacramento, Adams has over 200 athletes he currently works with. Just two weeks after opening his gym off East Side Road in Anderson, he has 67 people ready to grind. Age, sport, that doesn't matter. What matters to Lem is trusting the process. God's going to take you through great things as far as success and failures. 
But I know one thing is, is that you better trust it because if you throw in the towel early, I mean, we're, you're really not going to even get an opportunity to kind of see how good you can be. He's excited to get involved with more of our community's athletes. And yes, he's going to push you. Just remember. If this scrawny news guy can do it and go through with Lemon and Joy and leaving here with a smile on his face, I encourage everyone to do it. Thanks again, Coach. No doubt. For the North State's News, I'm Sam Comenti. Can someone give me a Gatorade, please? Today is the official start of hooping season, and let me tell you, I could be more excited. The Golden State Warriors hosted the Phoenix Suns for a nail-biter game. Second quarter, Josh Okogi lays it in. The Suns were ahead 52-40. to Until the third quarter, this is a good one for the Warriors usually. Curry with the ball, passes it to Dario Saric, who drives in and makes a layup on the right side, 84-78, to Warriors. And then the Suns get the ball back. Devin Booker with a three-point shot. He brought the Suns to 100 points. The Suns ended up winning it 108 to 104. The defending NBA champions, the Denver Nuggets, hosted the LA Lakers today, and Nikola Jokic came out to dominate. The Joker led the team with 29 points, 13 rebounds, and 11 assists. The triple-double king. The Nuggets proved themselves to be a threat this upcoming season. They won 119 to 107. And after the break, the state suing a social media company over the addictive nature of some apps. And your last student loan payment might have to be, might have been high, how to check. Plus, the Tinder app. It now has a new feature, how your friends can swipe left or right on your next date. Big Stories Making Local Impacts is up next. Welcome back. We're taking a look at some big stories making local impacts. Dozens of states are suing Meta over the addiction and harm the social media platform allegedly causes to young people. A federal lawsuit was filed in California today by more than 30 attorney generals. A state alleges Meta's products have harmed young people's mental health with its addictive features such as infinite news feeds and frequent notifications and that Instagram has contributed to a mental health crisis in the U.S. If you have federal student loans, you might want to check your account. About 305,000 borrowers have been told the wrong amount to pay. The Department of Education says it's working with servicers to fix the problem. It says impacted borrowers will be waiting until the issue is resolved. This affects about 1% of borrowers as payments have resumed post-pandemic. Good news for Tinder users, you don't have to screenshot profiles anymore to share with friends. The dating app has a new feature called Tinder Matchmaker, where you can invite friends or family to check out your potential matches. If you see someone that you like, you can send it to up to 15 people. You can log into Tinder as a guest or a user and recommend the person if you like them. After the break, it's time to chime. We're looking at some beautiful pictures of the sunset after the break. Welcome back. Before we leave you tonight, we know there was an amazing sunset when our Chime In page was flooded with photos. Here's just a few of the beautiful photos we got. Thank you so much to Mark, Cherry, Dave, and Sandy for all these amazing pictures. Remember to send all of your pictures to krcrtv.com. Cotton candy skies. I'll tell you. You know, we have such good sunsets here that truly, I believe most of those aren't like the color's not handsome, most of those. I think you can just take a shot and boom, it's exactly. looking good, all right. What's not looking good, these temperatures. Well, unless you wanted to bust out the thick parkas and stuff. I mean, we got a very cool rest of the week and weekend ahead, so plan on it staying in the 60s. That's not your lows, those are your afternoon highs. Lows will be in the 30s and 40s, so keep that in mind across the area with some wet weather for tomorrow, but not for Thursday. Back to you. Thank you, Brian. I love your weather reports as thank usual. You. you are my sunshine. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for watching KRCR News Channel 7 at 11. We really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great night. This is Sophia Brinsma with the North States News.